This video is on how to change the free running pulley on the alternator on a TD4 Land Rover Freelander 2. If when idling you get this awful rattling noise um, and then you accelerate a bit, then it stops, that will probably be this pulley. I did make a video of taking it all to bits, but uh, being professional that I am, I didn't have an SD card in it, but fortunately I did take some pictures. So the first part of this video was still pictures and the second part will be in video form. Not long before the pulley failed I'd done a complete service on this engine including swapping the fuel filter and when I disposed of the fuel filter the little bungs that come with it went back on the fuel filter to go into recycling. So what I did was got some old washing up gloves, rinsed them out thoroughly inside, turned them inside out to dry and then cut the ends of the fingers off and used them to cap the hoses and the connectors off. The first thing we need to do is take the fuel filter out. Once that's out of the way, you then need to remove the bracket that supports it. This image shows all the bolts you'll need to remove to get the fuel filter housing out of the way. With the fuel filter out of the way, the next stage is the power steering pump. Uh, it's secured by three bolts, two at the top, one at the bottom. With them out, it can be pulled forward and actually poked around the side of the engine. And here you can see I've cable tied it out of the way to the engine mount. The alternator itself is secured by two bolts. The top one is easily accessible. The bottom one is obscured by this idler on the fan belt. Once removed, you can see the bolt to the right of it. With the bolts removed, a simple bit of leverage with a pry bar and the alternator will become free. You then need to disconnect the famous blue wire as well as the main live feed to the battery. With the alternator out, the next job is to remove the pulley. I used the 33 spline tool you can see in the image and a Torx M10 12 point. Here you can see the tool in place and the way I removed it with a ratchet and a ring spanner. Um, I did try and do this without removing the alternator but there was no way on earth I could get enough leverage on there to do it. Which is why I ended up taking out the alternator. With the new pulley on, it's now time to put it all back together again. Before putting the alternator back into its locating position, I put some grease on either side of it just to help it slide that little bit because it's a very, very tight fit. With it back into position, the first thing we're going to do is put the 12 volt feed on that connects it to the battery. Put the nut on, tighten it down, and then this is a rubber bung that protects it. copper slip on one of the bolts that holds it in and slide it in the top mount and then tighten it up. Using quite a short stubby ratchet here because there really isn't very much room. It's a bit awkward. Once that in place, we then connect the infamous blue wire. start on the power steering pump. I cut the cable ties that are holding it out of the way, then lower it into position. 
instructions are located down on the top left hand corner of it. Bring that in, you can then put the bolts in place. Top right, which is the longer of the three. Just going to do it up finger tight just to hold it. Two other bolts of the same length, but we'll start with the bottom one because it's proper fiddly. Once you've located it, you can, with the tips of your fingers, actually do it up finger tight. It's a bit of a fiddle, but uh, as you can't see it, it's quite tricky to do it any other way. Once that's in, then we'll put the easy one in, which is the top left. It's a bit of a fiddle, but you can just get on the bottom of the socket and the extension bar. With the pump back in place, it's now time to move on to the bracket that supports the fuel filter assembly. Here I'm just sort of wedging it into its position. It's very fiddly. Um, and I've got one of the bolts on the back right pushed through just to help locate it and you can get it started with your fingers. With the two bottom bolts done up we can move to the two top ones. Again a bit of a fiddle with all the hose and all the gubbins in the way and get them tightened up. thing to do is the securing pin on the bracket for the dipstick which is a, a Torx, I can't remember the number now well they couldn't use the same Torx and everything, I don't know again it's a bit of a fiddle that's done this is the plate that goes in front of it all uh, there's a cable tie pushed through to connect the bottom part of the loom which would have wrapped around and zip tie on hold in position position with all the other wires down there. Lots of patience required. Once 
once we've got it in position, pull the ratchet strap tight, sorry, cable tight, tight, <laughs> cut the tail off. And the next thing to go is this little plastic guard, probably to stop it rattling. Again, it's a bit of a fiddle to get in. You have to sort of bend one of the ends back to get the two holes to line up on either side. There's also a securing dowel on the left hand side that you need to push home. Now I'm just putting a bit of copper slip on the four studs that are protruding. Make life a bit easier for next time this has all got to come out. in position, the next thing to do is drop in the fuel filter. If you're doing this and putting in a new fuel filter, I strongly suggest you prime it with fresh diesel. It's all seated in position. We've got the top nuts just to hold the securing plate in place. The bolt you can see is ticking out the top is for the engine cover. I'm leaving the actual fuel filter loose because it gives us a little bit more movement to get the hoses reattached. So I'm just carefully cutting the cable ties and pulling off the marigold protection devices. diesel spill. When you connect them back up again you should be able to push them forward and you hear an audible click and then you just pull them back again to make sure that uh, you're on them securely. Last thing you want to do is make, use one of these high pressure hoses to uh, make a bid for freedom. That's the return to the tank. the 
is to run with the piggyback on it for the uh, fuel temperature sensor is uh, very awkward to get back. You have to gently push it back. Try not to force these hoses too much because I think they're quite brittle. I should have used some smaller cutters to get in there, but we'll get there in the end. It's a bit of a nuisance to poke it back far enough to then get on and push back in, but we will go. Once they're all in place, I'll give them a whittle, make sure that uh, they're all nice and tight, and then we'll pop the three screws in that secure it. three of the same size so you don't need to worry about uh, which one went where. From memory I think this was a 5mm Allen key. If you've got this far and realise you forgot to take a picture of the fan belt ruling, routing, here's a, a picture of how it all goes. This is the idler gear, which is a bit of a fiddle to do one handed. But that goes on back in place, and there's a plastic cap that goes over to protect that nut, and then we start it. Once it's started, I hold the revs up for about 2,000 revs for a while just to make sure it gets the worst of the air out and then let it idle for a while. Here you can see it's idling nice and smoothly. Prior to the change of the pulley, this belt was jumping around all over the place, which is a good indication of that's what the problem is. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and it's got your car fixed.